listening to the Go and Tell Gals podcast, and I'm your host, Jess Connolly. On each episode, I'll have a guest who will give us a peek into what it looks like for her to run on mission in her everyday life. Our prayer is that it leaves you encouraged and spurred on to go and tell the good news right where you're at. Today, we have an amazing treat on the podcast. We've got my friend, Annie Downs, who is not just my friend, but I know an internet online podcast friend for so many of you. Annie is a dynamic leader. She is an incredible disciple maker. She's the host of her own personal podcast, That Sounds Fun with Annie Downs, and she's also one of the co-hosts of The Relevant Podcast. Annie has written a ton of books. So many of them have been incredible bestsellers, and she just came out with a brand new book on October 2nd called Remember God. Annie is funny, she's honest, she's compelling, she loves God, and we love her. Let's get started and hear what she has to say. Friends, I am thrilled to tell you today, I mean, we do have the queen of everything, but she's specifically the queen of podcasting, Annie Downs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, know about that, I am, I'm choosing to not even entertain comparison thoughts about what it's like to interview the best podcaster that, you know, everyone loves so much that Here. I love so much, but I, it's worth it for me to push past any insecurity I would feel to give the women who are listening to this the wisdom that you have. Thank you so much for being here. You are killing me, Jess Connolly. Come on now. I'm dead serious. I mean, I was going into my little podcasting closet this morning and I said, all right, going to go interview Annie. And the girls in my office were like, we love Annie. And I was like, I know, I know, I know. I do too. So sweet. My favorite thing to say is she's better than you think. Oh my gosh. I know the internet loves Annie, but real Annie is even better than the internet could ever know. Thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot because you and I have walked some real, real stuff over the last few years. So for you to feel that way really is complimentary and kind. So thank you. I feel it times a million. Okay. It's a crazy season for you right now. I would imagine. I haven't heard a lot about what your day-to-day life looks like right now, but just yeah. looking at the internet, it looks yeah. wild. I am so thrilled I get to see you next week. So this podcast will come out a few days after I get to see you and a few days after your book launches. But, you know, we ask all our guests, what does mission look like for you right now? And what does it look like for you right now? What does it look like the week before a book launch? Right. (laughs) I mean, you know, you've done it multiple times. The app that is running in the background, Jess, is I'm making some big decisions about what 2019 and 2020 look like. Mm. And so this question is really, where I am of asking like, yeah, what does on mission mean for me? Hmm. And does it look like what it has looked like? Maybe. Does it look like what all of our friends are doing? Maybe. Or it might ask to be something really different. And my myself and my manager and my agent, this is what we are talking about and praying about and fasting about right now. Yeah. So that's a deeper question than, <laughs> than even like, I'm getting up early every day and I'm, you know, right. But if you want to just talk about what being on mission looks like to launch a book for me, well, today I'm getting my nails painted to match the book cover because that's one of my very favorite, like (laughs) pastime with books Yeah, is to take an hour and just like celebrate, you know, like, you know me, I'm about celebrating a book before it comes out. Because you've done the work, you've obeyed to the best of your ability. You have obeyed God. So I celebrate the book before it comes out. Because on the off chance that I did what God asked me to do, (laughs) the work is done. And so I get my nails painted and my friend Kate, who works with me, is sitting across from me. And we have spent the morning ordering gifts for people on my team because we like to give a gift to everyone who has contributed to the book. Um, and I, and I do all this before the book comes out and I want any of it attached to how many sell. Mm -hmm. And so I send a gift to my agent and to my management and to all the people at the publisher, all the employees who've worked with me, everybody gets like a little prize just for surviving me in the writing season. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and then Monday night, the book will come out Tuesday, October 2nd, Monday night, I go to dinner with friends and we celebrate the book. And again, it, it, because it is never to me about the result, it is always about the obedience. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, 
So what else does it look like this week? I'm writing thank you notes. You know how this goes. We mail out books to our friends. You have one coming to you. Yes. And, and so it really matters to me that each of my friends who gets it has a handwritten note from me. Mm-hmm. Because I think that matters. And something yeah. I'm doing different with this one, Jess, is the first round of books that we're making sure get to everybody by book launch are all my legitimate friends who've either been on my podcast or who are in my life and we've done ministry together. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a round of strangers. I love and just that. Like, okay, God, who else would you want me to put this in their hands that I don't know that may have voice in people's lives that won't find me otherwise. Yeah. And so instead of trying to have it all hit on one day, I'm just going, you know what? Let's just get it to people. (laughs) Who cares? Yes. On top of the book though, you are preaching at your church. You're always traveling to teach and preach other places. Yeah. Yeah. You're podcasting. I'm teaching a couple weekends a month traveling. I teach at my home church about once a quarter and I host a couple of times a quarter here at cross point. And yeah. And our podcast is two shows a week, but that sounds fun. It's two shows a week. And then I'm on relevant. That's two shows a week, Jess. And so oh literally a full day of my work week, eight, eight to 10 hours of my work week is podcasting, Yeah, which is awesome. And I love it, but it is a lot of hours of How, talking. How's your physical throat? Right. So I've had to start being really careful and started like drinking voice tea that bet. sounds terrible. Yeah. yeah, I would uh, bet. So what's going on that you don't see? I moved into a new house. Um, yes. You and I have talked about this yes. offline in my real life, but, but God just made a way for a new place and it was the right season to like start over and have a new home and ask God, what's this one about? Like, what's this house about? You know? Yeah. So moving and making sure everything's right at the house and You know, there's all that going on in the background. There's friendships and relationships and life going on in the background too, that I'm trying to balance. A friend and I went to a movie last night where I was just like, I know I'm not done with the work I need to do. Also, I just need a break and dinner and M&Ms and to watch a Western, you know? So, so I do, but you also know me, I work really hard to find fun and probably take breaks more than I should to some degree. But I, um, I just had to last night. I was like, I can't, I can't. I'm operating subpar because I'm lacking fun. And, Mm. and I've learned that about myself that I can feel a lack when I'm not choosing to have any fun and I have to stop and do it or I can't keep going. Okay. Here's one thing I want to, I want to pause on and, and ask you about, and what's good is that I've never physically gotten to ask you about this in our real life friendship. And I wasn't saving it for the podcast, but now I'm glad that we've saved it. So (laughs) the name go and tell comes from Jesus's resurrection. The passage in John where Mary is saying like, is it you? Are you here? You've risen from the dead. And basically my paraphrase, go and tell the guys that I'm up, go and tell the disciples I am who I said I was. I did what I said I would do. And I was asking the Lord in the spring, what can we tell women? Because you and I get to talk to so many different women in so many different cultures where mission and ministry look so differently. And so I was asking God, like, what do I tell them? Because so many, they go to different churches. They're in different, you know, expressions of the faith. So many different spheres. So many different spheres, so many different denominations. So I can't tell them to do what I do. I can't, you know, I would never want to. Um, What can I tell them? And I felt like he led me back to that passage and say, like, you can tell them all to go and tell because Jesus said, go and tell. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. But my favorite expression of how you are running on mission, like just from my perspective, is the preaching at Cross Point. I have to tell you because uh, we've literally never talked about this on the podcast in you know yeah. all four of the episodes I've recorded so far. Um, right. But it's a big part of of my walk with the Lord and me understanding mission, just kind of sorting this out. And so I just about die every Sunday that you preach at cross point. And I just watch your faithfulness and your obedience and I watch the Lord use it. And I get so excited for the kingdom about what it means that you're doing it. How has that been for you? How has that progression and that process? I mean, because it's not yeah. a long time thing, right? It's only been the no, last year. No, it's been about a so. year. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. A, a little more than a year. What's it um, been like? How does it feel? How do you press through? What feels hard about it? Yeah. You know, it's really interesting because I have changed and grown and 
even changed my thoughts on what it looks like to preach. Yeah. And what it looks like to do that here. Now, what has grown in me is this love and understanding of the fullness of God. And my pastor's name is Kevin. If pastor Kevin is fully reflecting the image of God and so am I, and so are you. And so are our male friends. Then, then God must be fully man and fully woman, right? Mm -hmm. Like God must be, if he is everything and we are in him, if our image is made in him, then he must be fully male and fully female. Yeah. And, and there are so many references. I mean, Jesus called God, his father. So I am certainly not taking anything away from the masculinity of God, but I also find and enjoy the places where God's likened to a mother yeah. in scripture. And, and so, and what we see true over and over again is that people need a mothering voice and a father voice. Yeah. The healthiest families have both of those. And, and that is what we're seeing at cross point is that there are a few women that are getting, and I'm one of them that are getting to step into a mothering voice role for our community. Yeah. And so I'm on the teaching team. There's four of us. It's three guys and myself. And it's been really fun, Jess. It's been so fun to see how God has grown and changed me over the year since I started. Every time I teach, when I come off the stage, Pastor Kevin will say, you're more sure up there than you were last time. Come on. You know, like yeah. you're more sure of your spot. You're more comfortable. He, I used to wear high heels all the time. And he was like, you can stop wearing high heels because everybody's already listening. Like you're done with that. So you know? Good. Yeah. And not that heels are bad. I mean, right. every, you can teach whatever you want to teach in, but, yeah. but when you're home, you know, like if I really believe that I'm part of a mother voice of a family, when I'm at home, I don't have to wear high heels. Right. And that's not what my family needs of me. That may be what some other families need of me, but that's not what my family here needs of me. You so. don't have to put on a costume or a uniform. Yeah, that's right. You know, the other thing that Pastor Kevin also said is that Jesus is the common ground. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the common ground. No matter who's talking, if you're talking about Jesus, people are in. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen that, that the men in our family and our church family like hearing from me, like they like hearing from the other pastors because Jesus is our common ground yeah, and they, they can trust me and know that I'm part of the family. And so it's been really beautiful. I also really care about seeing people get saved yeah, and making sure that people go from death to life. And if I don't preach Jesus, what am I doing? You know? So that's been a beautiful part of this story too, is seeing an increase in myself of how much I love talking about Jesus. Mm. I love it. That I answered that for you. I feel like yeah. I rambled. Right. No, that's exactly the right answer. I mean, there is no right answer, but if there was one, that would be it. I think like the thing I'm loving hearing most is that you saw Jesus in a more expansive way when yes. you stepped into yeah. that obedience. And I would that's say, right. you know, that's where whether or not women who are listening are teaching in their churches or not, they're going to hear like, you know, when we step into the obedient call he's placed on our life, we get more of him. We get, we yes. get access to more of him. We get to experience more of him. So good. That's right. I love that's that. right. One of the things that I'm so careful on, on social media is calling it teaching or preaching or whatever. I'm like, you dear listener, you call it whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I don't have to be called anything. If you have a theological disagreement with a word that we're using, totally fine. Yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah. I'm, I don't have a title at my church besides teaching team. I'm just Annie. Right. And so my opportunity is, would you be a woman who's willing to talk about Jesus in front of our whole church family? Right. Yes. Done. Yes. And so like, I just go and tell and don't care about the title. <laughs> right. <laughs> go and tell and don't ask, what does this mean? And what is my title? And like, who cares? Just talk about Jesus and make the art he tells you to make and, and then go to the next thing. A hundred percent. It's funny already in the podcast, a theme that keeps coming up with different people is that language matters and it doesn't all at once. Yeah, so yeah, even yeah. that, even that thing of preaching versus teaching about six months ago, I sat down with Nick and I was like, I need you to like go Greek with me. I need you to yeah. really, should I be saying that I preach or should I be saying that I teach? And he said essentially what you said, like, I'm not sure that it matters. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure that it matters. And he was like, but if it'll make you feel better, let's go, let's go in deep and yeah. let's see like what it says. You know, he landed yeah, what on did come Jesus to? said the word he uses for teach the good news and baptizes all people, the great commission was 
the word preach. And so he was like, I feel like you get to say preach. But then at the end of it, he sat down and he was like, Jess, you've never, here's the point, whatever we call it, you've never gotten up in front of a group of people and talked about God's word without crying, raising your voice and like stomping your feet. So if that's not preaching, like he was like, I almost just don't want to do disservice to the the particular gift he's given you. Now, Nick is a really thoughtful, quiet, pensive teacher. So he's going to stand in the same place. So he was like, I almost want to say like, what I do is teaching and what you do is preaching because you're stomping on the ground and yelling and crying sometimes. And he was like, it's it's different. But he was like, the point is language matters and it doesn't all at once. That's right. You're already doing it. That's true. So, and you know, for me, it's very much like, don't argue about a title and miss what God's doing. Right. (laughs) Like if a title is going to keep you from seeing God move in a way, then you got to let go of that title. If you're the preacher and you're insisting on being called a preacher because that matters to you, you may miss what God's actually doing. 100%. 100%. And if you're sitting in the audience and you're going, is that woman preaching? You may miss what God's doing. Like, let's just, yes. let's just do the work, man. Let's just do the work and put our heads down. And we don't have to retweet every time someone loves our work and we don't have to call ourselves preachers. We just need to tell people about Jesus and be done with it. Come on. I got feelings about it, dude. Let's go and tell. (laughs) Go and tell. Go and tell. I have a friend who's got this barista that we call it in in your basket, like that you feel like God's put in your life. Yes. And I just watch him and he's like, yeah, I'm buying coffee from the expensive place again this week because I think that she has another question about Jesus. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, just go and tell, man. Like you're doing like. We're doing it. It doesn't have to be on stages or in books or whatever. Like go and tell your neighbors and go and tell the people in your church and the baristas and everybody who follows you on the internet. Yeah. So good. Sorry. Okay. I'm so fiery. I am. <laughs> Sorry. You yes. will never apologize about that with me in Jesus name. Here's the deal. So your, your main podcast that you do on your own, I don't know if you would call yep. it your main one or not, but it's your solo yeah. podcast well, it's yep. called that sounds fun, which That's is great. The best name. Thank um, you. The question I'm about to ask does not sound fun, but I do believe that it will free some women up and help them. What is hard about running on mission right now? And where is God meeting you in that? Oh man, I'm just going to tell you the truth. What is hard about running on mission is I think I'm going to disappoint some Christians. Mm. And that is so terrifying to me. But the longer I do this and the more I see some doors open, particularly around the podcast where people who don't believe what we believe are really willing to be on the show. And that means a couple of things. One, it means I get to model for the listeners. How do you be in relationship with non-believers in a way that speaks truth without necessarily having to share the gospel with words every time? Hmm. And so I get to model that for my listener. But what that also means is that some people aren't going to like what happens when you bring on people who aren't just talking about God. And that's scary for me, Jess, because I'm really good at making the Christians happy. And I just feel like maybe we're going to make some shifts. Here's what I said to someone the other day, Jess, and you live this really, really well. There are things that I do that 50 other women in our space can do and do really well. Mm -hmm. There are a handful of things that I am literally the only person who can do them. Yes. And I have got to put my heart and energy into the things that God made just for me to do even if those aren't the most financially lucrative or influence lucrative or stage lucrative, I have to not care Yeah, because the amount of time we're here versus there is so significantly different Right, right. <laughs> that I just can't keep caring. And I do care about what people think of me. And the Lord's just kind of pulling apart some of that of going like, okay, but what if I made you to do something different and now it's time to walk into some of those things? That's what mission's looking like for me right now. Does that answer that? Very much so. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pause right now and I want you to just pray wherever you're at. I want you to thank God for Annie and her obedience. And I want you to beg him for peace that passes understanding as she continues to step out in obedience. And I want you to pray for boldness for her. And I want you to pray for new spaces for her and for new ground for her. And I want you to partner with her. And I'm going to do the same. Hey, we are really grateful that you're running on mission in this way. Thanks, sister. I'm trying. 
I mean, what if what if people get saved? What if they what do? If? I mean, what if he's real? <laughs> what if? Yeah, that's the thing. I just keep thinking like, I'm like so teary to saying all this to you, but I interviewed a couple of non-believers for my podcast in the last couple of weeks. And when I hung up one time, I just said to the Lord, like, are you telling me that you're going to bring listeners who need to know Jesus and guests? Yeah. Are you telling me that you're going to bring guests who don't know the Lord in hopes that they might? Like, I am unworthy of that spot on this planet. Mm. So good. I'm so thankful. Right. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you guys for praying for Annie. And and yeah, thank you, Annie, for leading in this way. Right. Thank you for that. That means a lot. Okay, fun left turn. Fun Y'all left turn. Let's do it. I love that. <laughs> this will sound fun with Jess Connolly. That's right. That's why we do it. <laughs> what is helping? What are some small tips or tricks that yeah. God's given you, that another human has given you, that just help you do what you're supposed to do? Um, yeah. I mean, it can be big. It can be small. It can be spiritual. It can be logistical. Yeah. So here's a couple of things. Number one, I'm Delta loyal. I only fly one airline. Oof. And if you can't get me on Delta, you can't get me. And <laughs> and because the seats are the same. I see flight attendants that I know. The people at the counter are the same. I know how to pack my luggage, like Delta or bust, really. Come on. There's a rare time I, I'll get on a Southwest, but that's about it. So that's a big tip for my life is stay in Delta loyal. Another thing is that I have someone who cleans my house, Jess. Oh, yeah. Because... I really care about a clean house. And so I lower some other areas of my budget every month so that I have an extra hundred dollars once a month to have someone come in. Yeah. It just makes my home life so much more peaceful. Yeah. And it is worth it to me to not get my nails done or not get to eat out or shop if it means that my house is a peaceful place for me. Free some women uh, up with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, listen, yeah. there's nothing holy about being the only person who can clean your own toilets. Like, get out of here. No. You are gifting someone else an opportunity to make an income, <laughs> to be a part of your story if you will <laughs> invite them into your home. A hundred percent. I mean, genuinely. Like, right? I, mean, I mean, like our friend Logan Wolfram, when I listen to her talk about the woman who cleans her house, she's like a part of her family. Yes. Yes. Genuinely. Like, that's how Logan lives, man. She just like, everybody is she is on mission 24 seven, you know? I, yes. I'm going to tell you what, I feel like our housekeeper and her family, not only yeah. they brought us tamales last Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just showed up That's at our it. house and we're like, That's Hey, right. we're just here for Thanksgiving. And with their 200 tamales, I mean, yeah. that was a blessing. But I remember when I was a younger mom and a big fear I had about having a housekeeper yeah. is that I, I was like, Oh, well, my kids know that I'm a, you know, that I'm a good mom. Well, they know that first of all, I work all day long. I work all day long in our home like they still see me clean they know I can clean that's but right I can't right. believe how much it's opened up their eyes to getting to explain the refugee crisis to my kids nothing was more powerful than this past summer mm -hmm. when all the news mm -hmm. was going nuts about the kids separated from their families at the border and my amazing beautiful sweet housekeeper shows up with her two kids who are out of school for the summer and come to help her clean and I'm packing my kids in the car to take them to the library and I got to say like do you you know, A of all, what's happening in your life yeah, right now? We're yeah. going to the library and they're helping their mom clean. So first of all, if you want to talk about privilege and gratitude, we're about to talk about it. Yeah, that's right. Second of all, can you imagine these two people that you know that are your age that are helping their mom clean and how terrified they are about yeah. what you're, you're, you're hearing, you're hearing the news and I'm hearing the news and we're processing it in a wildly different way. And they are terrified. And I'm going to tell right. you by 3 PM that afternoon, I had kids writing letters to their senators. Like they really? were, yeah. they were so ignited. And all of a sudden, like their story was our story. Cause so that, they knew, cause yeah. they knew, cause they, they knew people yeah. who weren't like them. And so that I'm not saying, right. That's the whole reason to get somebody to clean your house. But for me, the Lord showed me like, you're so worried that they're not going to know you're a hard worker and a good mom. And instead they're getting this worldview. Yeah that they really need of just knowing yep. like everybody doesn't get to go to the library with their moms in the middle of the summer. That's not how it is. Yeah, so, that's right. Okay. That's, that's good. good. I'm glad you have a housekeeper. Yeah. Good for you. So that's a tip. And, and you know me, but I'm going to always tell you to chase the fun. Like you've got to have fun at some point every day. It doesn't have, have to be massive or wild or going to an amusement park. This is part of my personality, but I actually think this is true across the board is that it will bring so much peace to your life. If you will just take a break and have a little fun. Even if it's a walk around the block, listening to us or grabbing a, your favorite treat, like a Coke Icy or a yes. smoothie or whatever, 
or time with friends, you know, like I love my, you know, it's about me. I love my friend's kids. Yeah. And so it is a huge priority to me every week to see as many of my friend's kids as I can. Yeah. And so those are the things I do to kind of stay balanced and stay Annie. And you only learn the things that work for you by falling off the tightrope a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. My favorite fun thing to do, I'm going to tell you right now that I, some uh-huh. people might see if they see me online, but they may not have yeah. noticed. I head up those trampoline parks like you would Yes, believe. you do. I mean, and let's go ahead and give a logistical tip right now. The one question I get the most online is how do you do that? Not pee all over yourself. Cause we know we just yeah. like the bladders go. Right. I, right. I wear a pad and I just pee the whole time. Just yeah. let it out and oh I, my you know, gosh, I just see the whole time. <laughs> I just see you can't help it. I don't know if it's an age thing. I don't know oh if it's a baby gosh. thing, but it's like the second you step on a trampoline, it just falls out. So I wear a pad and I just yeah. jump my actual heart out. And people say like, do you yes, take your girl. kids? And I'm like, sometimes, but sometimes yeah. I just go yeah. endorphins and moving and fun and laughing. And That's it scares brilliant. me also because I'm terrified yeah. I'm going to break something. So yeah. Yeah, just have some fun. Okay, we're going to we end. did a 30th birthday party at a um, trampoline park, and the next day the group texts were like all the husbands <laughs> and wives and singles. We were all like, my knee hurts. My back hurts. Yes, yes absolutely. Like, it's, what have we like, done? Okay, we're quite old. That's good, good. It was fun. Um, okay, Annie, we are so grateful that you are so honest. I'm going to end with a few Spitfire questions just to encourage the gals. Now, I know this. They don't know. They may know. They probably all know this, but tell us anyways. The first is part A. Are you into the Enneagram? Duh. We know you are. So into the Enneagram. Part B is your number. I'm a seven. Yes. Hard seven. Hard. You have no wing? No, I jokingly say that I wing seven, but, um, <laughs> but you know, like when I'm running my company, I wing eight when I'm traveling, I wing six to make sure it's like, I, I yeah. see both wings in me, but in general, I just stick with the seven. I love it. I love it. I love a seven. I'm an eight, seven. So just solidarity. I know that's why we love each other. Cause yes. we both hit that seven and love it. <laughs> yep. Book you're currently reading. Are, can you read right now? Are you too yes. busy? No, no, no. I, I, you always, I always have to be reading something. Our teaching team at Crosspoint is reading Francis Chan's new book about yes. letters to the church. Have you read it yet? I have, I haven't read it. Do, it, it hasn't come out, right? Yeah, it, ha- it just came out. Okay, good, good, good. It's I new, need to it came grab out it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm reading that and then I'm reading a fiction book by Ted Decker. I love Ted Decker. I love Ted Decker. So I'm reading the bride collection, the bride's collection, which is apparently incredibly scary, but it hadn't gotten scary yet for me. But apparently if you guys don't know about Ted Decker, he writes like kind of scary Christian fiction. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it is wacky. It is. It's wacky and wonderful. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's right. It is. He's just brilliant. He's probably the most brilliant writer we know as far as he could, you know, like, you know, that one series of his books that are called green, white, red, and black. Do you know this, that it's a full circle? No. Yes. So you can, you can, it doesn't matter which one you start with. It reads as a full circle, Jess. He's a literal genius. How do you write four books in a circle? I don't Uh, know. I mean, I just drive in circles. Oh my word. Thank you. Thank you. I communicate in circles. I wonder in (laughs) circles. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ted Decker. I need to read those. What is your coffee order? Oh, it's so bougie. Are you ready? Yes. I love a bougie coffee order. I don't drink coffee. I just drink tea. So it's a grande or as big as you want, really, outside of Starbucks. But Starbucks, the venti is just a lot for me. So grande, no water, almond milk, chai. Oh, that's not fussy at all. No, sometimes I do a shot of espresso <laughs> if I am really tired. Sometimes I do extra hot. I can I can get worse. Okay, a okay. couple of weeks ago, I did the shot extra hot and pumpkin spice in it. I mean, I really <laughs> went for it. The guy said, that's an extraordinary order. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So good. Okay. I'm writing that's that down. Good. I want to know that. Um, oh, yeah. And the new water is the trick because when they make it, they mix the chai pumps with water and then add milk on top, your milk of choice. Yes. If you say no water, it's just more milk. And so it just gets creamier. Okay. I, the, my, the people I know who like chai always say no water. I've heard that. Yes. Thing. Chai to me tastes like dirty soap. Sure, sure, sure. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is like so okay with me. Okay. I would, I love coffee and I would drink coffee, but, uh, about 12 years ago, I was getting really severe migraines about once or twice a week. It was when I was teaching school. And so a doctor had me quit caffeine and I quit teaching and I haven't brought either of them back yet. Oh my gosh. I love it. Well, I, I pretty notoriously cut coffee a few times a year and I become the obnoxious friend who's like, we should never drink coffee guys. This is, I feel so much better. Yeah. We're so much healthier without it. And then like a week later, everyone's like, uh, you're not doing the coffee anymore. I'm like, Oh no, no. I'm back to three black venties a day. Like for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm zero to a hundred. Yeah. And I'm all for it. People can drink it. It just isn't great for my brain, but also, you know, me, I I'm allergic to dairy and I'm kind of vegan and like, I mean, like I'm such a weirdo and I don't care how anybody else eats, but that's how I eat. Yeah. I love it. Secret talent. I can find the harmony to just about any song. That is, I'm incredibly good at harmonizing. (laughs) I love it. Which is, is exactly why I'm good at preaching in my church because we are not trying, none of us are trying to be soloist. We're all trying to harmonize with each other. Say that again. That's beautiful. Yeah. Favorite lipstick. Do you have a favorite? Uh, Yeah, for sure. And I love lipstick. Current, I usually am, Bare Minerals is my favorite brand just because of how it makes my lips feel. Currently, I'm switching between one called XOX and one called Queen, but they're both Bare Mineral. Yes, I love it. Make a declaration. I love it. Yeah, girl. And then I got some reds when I need them. You know, Georgia Bulldogs, Preaching Sundays, whatever. Yes. Totally. Except for we don't have to wear a uniform. We don't have to. Yeah. We could, like we could preach in a t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. That's right. You can, you can teach in a t-shirt and jeans. You can teach in heels and red lips. Love you can it. combine all that. You can do all four of those things. I love it. Annie, thank you so much for making time today. We are literally praying for you. I mean, we are cheering you on and we're very thankful for all the good fruit that's coming out of you and through you right now. But also we're just praying for you and, and holding you up to him and, and grateful for what he's doing. It's all for Jesus, yeah? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's all for Jesus. So here's the thing you can't edit out. You are doing such important work here because you are leading us in how we lead. And I don't think this side of heaven, you'll ever know the fruit of everything you're doing, but, but you are doing a really good thing. And we are all incredibly grateful. I'm proud to be in the go and tell gals crowd. We are so thankful for you. Thank you, friend. I love you. We just finished recording with Annie and I just want to hop on and I know that episode was wildly encouraging for so many of you. I know so many of you love Annie and anytime we get to just hear a little bit about what's going on in her heart and in her ministry, it's so encouraging. Here's what I'm massively taking away from our time with her. We have varied gifts. We have different things that we're called to. And when we step into the obedience that God has put before us, we experience abundance in new ways. I pray that whether you do something similar to what she does, whether you want to, or whether you never could imagine getting on a stage and talking about God's word, I pray that you hear that. I pray that you hear the abundance and the freedom and the joy and the new experiences that are coming from her obediently looking at God, seeing what he's put in her hands and saying yes. Here's what Romans 12 says. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. That's from Romans 12, the message version. And I pray that wherever you're at today, whatever you're doing today, you experience the thrill, the joy, the peace, the patience, the hope, the excitement, the life, the healing that comes when we obediently respond to God's call on our life by going and telling the good news that we've got. I love y'all and I cannot wait to see you next week. Bye friends. Bye friends.